This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? It's now Tuesday morning and today we're going to do Sunday driving with the Mercedes EQS 450 plus. Remember that every day is a Sunday for Norwegian Sunday drivers. So uh, yes, this is also known as the OnlyFans run or the Eco run. I charged the car to 100%. It's been sitting in the garage and man, I have to show you super clumsy. You see, I have to park the car kind of in the middle here and then I have to leave some space on this side because the charge port is on the right side with the wrong side, not the left side with the right side. And just, just gonna show you how freaking tight we had to. Okay. Like, uh, oh shit. Uh. Man, look here how tight it is in the garage. I have my uh, electric scooter there, I have the eco floor, I have the leaf blower, and I have to squeeze it all the way in here. And then the cable actually goes under here okay I, I could get a long cable but still the problem is that the charge port is on the wrong side why because the driver's door is on the left side yeah do you, do you feel me bro do you feel me bro you see jesus man this is so clumsy uh, okay anyway wait what the heck happened now okay we had 100 percent wow 592 kilometers of estimated rate right? Dude, I just, there, okay, there. All right, so we are here and we're gonna drive all the way to Voss this time. <laughs> 382 kilometers, okay? And then on the way back, we go via Hardangi uh, Vidda. And then we end up here. And then hopefully we can get over Soli uh, Hugda. Uh, <laughs> so the car estimates 48% at arrival. Oh, okay, okay. I hope it's closer to 50% at arrival. But uh, yes, uh, that's it. We're gonna do the, all the preparation now and then get off, I mean, get off this land and get on the road. But well, based on the range test I've done, I estimate that we can actually go roughly 750 kilometers and that the consumption will be 140 watt hour per kilometer. We are now in Gol, and over here we see that 173 kilometers. Yeah, this car is under-reporting distance by 1.5%, so we have to correct for that. But consumption, 149 watt hour per kilometer. That is really good. Average speed, also on par with what we expect. <laughs> Welcome to Norway, where we have slow pokes driving under the speed limit. Yes, well, 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 it's 60 here. It's a 60 zone here. Well, 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 but this is really good because we have gone uphill. Yeah, in order to get here, I can see I show on the map, we have gone uphill and supposedly we have a little bit of headwind, but tiny little bit of wind, that's it. So, uh, wait, oh, do you have tailwind? I'm not sure. But the wind shouldn't be uh, significant at all, especially for a slick car like this with drag coefficient of 0 0.2. But okay, um, I will take my first P-stop here somewhere. I might go to Yemen. And then we'll see because I've been driving now for yeah, over uh, almost three hours, two and a half hours roughly. Then I feel like taking a quick pit stop. We are now at Remen Tusen. I'm going to go to the toilet. Yeah, you know what? Over here we have Kunde toilet, customer toilet. And you see we are at 76%, so we still have a long way to go. All right, that was a much needed uh, P stop. And wow, I noticed that at Remen over there, they have a, what they call this teleport, a place you can change diaper and the diaper is also free, huh? Thumbs up to Re Mathusen, cool. But okay, so um, yeah, now the consumption is gonna go up because we're going up, up, up the hill. But um, yes, first I thought about going via Hamsedal, but I changed my mind. I want to go via Hardangivida first and then we take Hamsedal route on the return and then hopefully I can get back to Oslo, right? Hmm. I might take another route, we'll see, we'll see. But the road over here, oh, oh they paved this section. 
But I don't know if you guys can hear it. This car is dead silent. The soundproofing here is top. Let me check something. It's top notch. Wait, is this double glazed window? That's weird. It doesn't feel like double glazed window, but I saw on the description on this car, this one has the, the acoustic package. So uh, even with 21 inch wheels, it is so silent here, like a true German electro auto. And just look at the interior. Look at the seat. Oh yeah. Look at the lack of the hyper screen. <laughs> no, but this is just fine. I don't see the hype with a big ass hyper screen. This one is also very functional. And I feel like the hyper screen was just waste of space. There, uh, I pointed out before when I drove the, the hyper screen is that there was so much unused space, but here all the space has been uh, used properly. We are now at Harangibida and uh, see normally I never drive this route. I would take Hemsedal route instead the other mountain. Rather we're going that way on the way back because Hemsedal route is straighter and smoother. But so that means that over here the road is kind of twisty and also bumpy because of uh, what they call it telehive, um, frost hive. But the EQS is the perfect car for this task because the suspension here is just super comfy it floats over all the bumps it's just magic how it works really so this is the best car for driving over Hardangibida <laughs> and I'm gonna enjoy it for now until we are down at the lowlands again We are now in Voss. Well, actually, it's most specifically called Skulestadmo. So we're going to take yet another the P stop. This is the second P stop. Here you see the Stadt so far. Wow, 145 watt hour per kilometer. Not too bad. And then we are 50%. So we are halfway. Wait, so we can multiply this by two and roughly 640 kilometers, maybe 630, 640 is what we expect so far. So, all right. I think it's some. Yeah, food and pee time now. Damn, this is a real Beetle. It's a modified exhaust. Let me see. Uh, is it even road legal? Well, change the camber slightly. We have uh, roof uh, cargo, Hansa beer. We have bicycle. We have uh, interior. We have a, a retro radio. Damn, this is the real Beetle right here. I think this must be add-on uh, sunshade here. Yeah. Other than that, I have to say, the cars back in the days, they were quite small compared to today's cars. But this is unfortunately just fossil. Okay, that was a great stop. I had some uh, non-disclosed food at um, the gas station. <laughs> and also I bought this as some snack. We have Svele. Huh? We, you know, we are at Vestlande. Over here, they eat something called Smalahove, which is um, a sheep head. Okay, I'm not planning on eating that, but at least I will eat a Svele. Let's try. Mmm, mmm, nice Svele. Yeah, mmm, mmm. And the auto steer in the Mercedes is so good that I can have a Svele while driving. Thank you. 
are now at the highest point over Hamsedal. It's nice and windy here. Uh, we just have to do a little checkpoint. So what I can show you is that, oh wait, we don't have any flag reference, but I can show you that the wind, I don't know if you can see it here in the lake, the wind blows this way. Now we finally have tailwind and downhill. Let's check out how it is. Oh man, look, look at this car. Oh, it has brothers here. I can show the stats how far we have gone so far. Okay, we're actually back on the road, but look here. We just passed the 500 kilometer mark on the speedo, which means that the real distance is like what, 510 by now. Okay, consumption is a bit high, but now comes the interesting part because it's going to drop. So we will drive now the route kind of almost the same back again, I guess. Here you see back to Oslo. And if we look at uh, this one, you can see that we have 25% left and the car estimates 192 kilometers. So which means that we should at least be able to drive 700 total. Will it go 750? We will see. Wow, oh, actually over here we don't have much wind. But this is beautiful landscape. In summer. In winter, not so nice. As you see, right now I'm using ventilated seat on one. That's good. Keep myself cool. Plus that I, I, I have enabled only fans. So you see AC is off. We have lots of dust on the screen. <laughs> and then I have to set it kind of low, but yeah, but it's just to force it to uh, run only fans to suck in some nice cold air. Yeah, 14.5 degrees from outside. So it works fine now. We're trying to save energy as much as we can. And oh yeah, I'm gonna start coasting downhill. now 6 30 in the evening we passed um, Gaul a while ago and uh, yes now we have done 605 kilometers on the trip meter and look at the consumption man 146 woohoo <laughs> and you know we still have more elevation back to Oslo yeah I don't remember what elevation we are now but you can see on the map here we have to go yeah back to Oslo you see I navigated to um, Sulihugda and uh, map this one works now it didn't work on 1000 km challenge for some reason but you see here it estimates that we will arrive at Sulihugda with four uh, percent Sulihugda is a hill before Oslo which means that I know if I can reach Sulihugda then I'm safe because before Sulihugda is kind of critical there are not many fast chargers there or even slow chargers but then if I clear Sulihugda then I'm safe then I can get to the lowland Sandvik or Hervik whatever right and you see here now it's 14 degrees celsius the sun is kind of like uh, over there somewhere and you know this car is built like a tank it has so good insulation and i forgot to mention in the daytime the sun was shining here but it also has heat insulated glass so this is like a tank and it means that now i actually turn off hvac <laughs> so we are saving as much juice as possible so you remember guys that no fans is always better than only fans yeah tell your wife that <laughs> This is it. We're getting close to Sulihugda and we have 4% battery left. <laughs> Any Leaf owners here? Leaf owners be like, Gee, what the heck are you doing? We have 4% left and you're trying to get over to Sulihugda. <laughs> you should be finding a charger by now, but no problem because this car has a humongous battery. Even at 4%, I have 30, 30 kilometers of range left. So I should be fine, right? And even the car here in the instrument cluster, it indicates me that I can reach the charger. Yeah, I mean, I can reach the destination, which is the Sulihugda. So we trust the BMW. No, we trust the Mercedes. <laughs> I've been driving BMW too much lately. 
Oh, come on, come on. Oh, sorry, how that? Yes. Oh, yeah. 3% like a boss. Oh, this is getting a little bit scary because we have tortoise mode now. 40% power left, but only 1% left. And uh, 12 kilometers indicated range, but we are in the freaking tunnel. Oh, I can't run out of the juice in the freaking tunnel. Yeah, that's kind of scary. Oh, shit. We have 25% power. There was another warning here. This is it, man. 0% left. <gasps> shit. I'm still not home yet. Come on, come on. Don't die on me. EQS, don't die on me. Uh, we are home now with 0%, zero, zero kilometer. <laughs> but 40% power. I know we have more, but okay. What, what the, there's a container in front of the house now. What the heck? Where do I park? Uh, 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 okay, let me maneuver into place. Okay, let's see. 742.4 kilometers. Uh, wow, 145 watt hour per kilometer, 700. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we look at all the specs today and um, you see that um, uh, we managed to drive 753 kilometers. That is mind blowingly far. <laughs> but to my big surprise, the consumption was only 143 watt hour per kilometer. Remember that at the 90 test with HVAC on, I managed to average 150 kilometers per hour, but I drove a lot faster. The average speed was close to 90 kilometers per hour. Today it was 66 only. Uh, but today I turned off HVAC even to try to drive very economically. Okay, not like hypermiling, but I wonder uh, if I would drive the 90 test without HVAC, maybe it would be lower. Maybe it would be only 120, uh, 146. Seven maybe wild guess, but you see, it seems like this car, uh, the difference between uh, like uh, eco run versus like more normal run, it doesn't seem to be much different. And it seems like the lowest possible you can go. For example, if you hypermile this car, lowest consumption, just wild guess based on my nine years of experience driving almost one million electric kilometers. I get the impression that maybe this EQS, uh, the lowest you can go in consumption could be something like 130, maybe 130, 135 watt hour per kilometer. Whereas a Tesla can actually average like the Tesla Model S, right? Uh, uh, that one was even a P85D. Should be able to average like 100 watt hour per kilometer. Like Raven, for example, it would be interesting for me to borrow a Model S Raven. That one has a smaller battery even, but I think the Raven has the potential to be really efficient. So, well, I guess if I did the Eco run, this Sunday run, run with Raven, uh, long range, uh, I might be able to maybe go down to roughly 130 watt hour per kilometer. And that means around 700, 710 kilometers of range. We should try it. This would be interesting to try. Like how efficient can the car become when you drive more economical but with this one i think the problem is that it's too heavy it has big wheels okay smaller wheels will help of course uh and so on so that's where the limitation is with this car but okay anyway today was about the eqs and i gotta say man this eqs just blows my mind when it comes to comfort and also now we've seen range but also when it comes to efficiency okay it doesn't go like super low but it's still does it really really well 143 watt hour per kilometer in this big ass car with all this comfort is still really impressive uh i just love the soundproofing the dampers you know the the the, the comfort on the bumpy road and all, over the mountain that's the a sound system you know this is in a way you know many times i borrow press cars and when i return them i'm like okay finally i'm done with that one oh you know but then with the EQS, when I borrow this car, I kind of want to buy it. <laughs> you know that feeling? It's actually a very good um, uh, compliment to uh, Mercedes that I actually want to buy the press car. Like, let me, let me just check something here. So this, this is the car. Yeah. 
So it cost 1.15 million nook. Uh, eventually, and then this, this car has done over uh, uh, 11, no, it has done 11,000 kilometers on the odometer. So maybe one day when they sell the press car, I could buy it. What oh, my neighbor is here. But then, do I need it? Can I get a good price for it? Well, I probably don't need it. But do I want it? Yeah, I want this car. <laughs> I want, wifey loves it. I have to tell you guys, I, I shuttle wifey and the baby here. And normally wifey, she doesn't care much about my press cars. I borrow like, I borrow the BMW i4, and I'm like, hey, do you like it? And she was like, mm, you know. Uh, and like, usually I have to ask her like, hey, what do you think about this car? What do you think about the looks? What do you think, you know? And, she, and then she answers, well, yeah. But with the EQS, I didn't say anything. Wifey looked in the, she was like, this is nice interior. This looks luxur luxurious. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then when we start driving, she was like, this is comfy. This is quiet. This has good ride. I like, yeah. And then she started asking me, how much does it cost? Can we buy one? Wifey asked me, can we buy one? I said, yes, honey, of course we can buy one. <laughs> that's, that's it, you know, with the EQS. No other cars impress wifey. Except for the EQS. <laughs> I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.